And now, Warming Center Wednesdays with the Flathead Warming Center and KGEZ's John Hendricks, where we tackle hard conversations around the complex causes of homelessness and discuss how we as a community can collaborate to address them. And joining us today, the Warming Center's Executive Director, Tanya Horn. Thanks for having me again. Sure. So, um, you know, we're still a little bit uh, wondering where we're going to go. We have no answers yet from the City Council as to even what they're thinking at this point. Uh, What did you take away from the work session the other night? Well, I believe that there's three options. There's one to revoke the CUP, our conditional use permit. That means to take the CUP back to revise the CUP by giving us additional conditions to be able to to operate where we are or to not do anything. So those are kind of the three options that they're looking at. And uh, how would the second option affect you? Um, what did I say was the sec- second okay. option? Thanks. <laughs> more, more conditions. Uh, more conditions. That would be interesting. I don't know what they would believe those more conditions are because I am, you know, I, the warming center, the board of directors, uh, the staff that we have uh, are limited in how we can control uh, crime. What we're talking about in well, some you're... situations is crime and how can we control crime? So I, I don't know what those conditions can be that would make a difference within the neighborhood. I'm open to hearing that. I'm open to having that dialogue with the city, but I don't know how we can control the neighbor's concerns that they have that, revol- uh, that involves criminal activity. Well, you're... Uh, you're permit as it stands right now is within what a half mile um no the uh permit the way that i understand it and this is a disagreement between us and the city uh the only definition that i have been given of a neighbor is 150 feet radius of the warming center okay. however the city has made that now a half mile radius around the warming center as far as our radius of responsibility and our radius to uh, try to uh, control and respond to things that are happening so a half mile would take you south down to uh, meridian road of start i mean highway highway uh, two uh, you might as well say a mile. A half, yeah. a half mile is is impossible. It is impossible. Mm-hmm. So it's like the goalpost has changed for us from what I understood the definition of our direct neighbors are, 150 feet. And those are the folks that I have focused on to do the things that we said that we would do within our conditional use permit. Those are the uh, neighbors who have my direct cell phone number. Those are the neighbors that we are definitely responsive to. Not that we won't be responsive to other neighbors when they have concerns. We, we, mm-hmm. we try to respond to everyone that makes their concerns known. At the, at the public meeting, the first hearing that we had, so many uh, complaints were there that, number one, I didn't know about. They, they did not respond to me. A few that said that they responded, that they, they did reach out to me, um, were disappointed because my only response was that they needed to call law enforcement. There was nothing that I could do. It didn't mean that I was being dismissive, but that's all that I could suggest was that they to call to call law enforcement. But a lot of the issues, we didn't know what they were until that meeting. Mm-hmm. I cannot be responsive to crimes And I also cannot be responsive to information that I don't have. We have a certain limit of where we can be responsive and responsible for. Okay, so um, are you privy to uh, police reports? We are not. uh, When when there's a call for service into the area or into the warming center, are you privy to those reports? We are not. That is a suggestion that we would definitely have. Now, in an informal basis, we have certain law enforcement officers who will come to us or give us a call and ask if we have a certain person staying with us. We have always cooperated with the law enforcement. Again, we can be responsive within our privy of, uh, you know, ability to hold people accountable. 
but not if we don't have that information. But we have worked with law enforcement to answer their questions, to look at pictures, even neighbors that might could take a picture of someone who might be a bad actor. But I would point out that when we see pictures, there are times that we don't know the individual. It's assumed that we do know the individual. It's assumed that everyone who comes into the warming center is someone that is coming into the warming, into the neighborhood for the warming center. We don't know everyone who comes in the neighborhood and and we can't serve everyone. So that 150 foot radius that you're talking about, you have done some things to make sure that that does not become uh, an area where people would loiter. We have. If folks come early, if they loiter on our neighbor's property at any time, or if they're loitering on our property when we're closed, they would forfeit their bed for the night. That's very important. But that's within 150 radius because I cannot control someone standing on a street corner anywhere, well, but not. much less further up Meridian or down further by, by uh, the fairgrounds. So if something goes wrong in around the vicinity of the warming center, are you empowered to make an arrest, to do something? No, I cannot arrest people. We are not law enforcement. We so we said have... that several times in the meeting. We are not law enforcement. The only thing that we have the ability to do is to tell a person that they forfeit their their ability to access our services. And we have done that time and time again. We have done what we can in that regard. So you eject them from the building or from the premises, then what happens from there is... Well, I guess that's law enforcement, so you got to have a call to law enforcement. Well, if they are unsafe, we're calling mm-hmm. law enforcement. All right. So um, let's kind of move on to uh, another area here that I think we need to talk about, and that is uh, uh, the overall problem, okay? Uh, we've got homeless people all over the country. We've got homeless people all over the world. We've got migration going on all over the world, but we do have immigration and, uh, and illegal immigration going on, apparently here in the Flathead now. Are they coming to you? We have not served anyone that doesn't speak English. They have yeah. not come to us. The rumor has come to us, though. <laughs> There's a certain narrative there, and he, there was the rumor that there was a line of, and, and it used the phrase, illegal aliens outside the warming center, and ICE was out there, and uh, that was circling the rumor mill, and that was absolutely not true. Okay. You know, we have a number of uh, undocumented people who just kind of come in during the uh, times that were... Uh, Uh, harvesting our cherries on Flathead Lake, our world-famous Flathead Lake cherries. And, uh, uh, you know, they're they're migrants. They come in and they do a job that uh, we need done, and uh, we go. And a few years ago, uh, there was a rumor that ICE was going to be here, and uh, we were told that uh, we're not coming to the Flathead this year to pick your cherries. We're afraid to come here. Well, my gosh, I mean, you could just see the people along Flathead Lake with the orchards seeing millions of dollars rotting on the trees. And uh, somehow or another, we were able to calm all of that down. So it doesn't seem that unlikely that we can calm all this down if we just use some reason. Yeah, I don't know very much about the immigration or anything like that. What I... What I do know is our percentage of folks that are locals that we serve here at the warming center, because that's a hot button with folks. Are they from here? Do we serve people who are locals? Because we have a big interest in serving our local community. And this year, this winter season, we served 324 individuals. And we get to know the people that we serve and getting to know them. Our statistic for last winter season for the 324 guests that we had was 94% have lived in the Flathead for a year or more. 12 months is residency to be in the, to, in, in the Flathead. Mm-hmm. For 94% have lived in the Flathead for 12, uh, sorry, for 12 months or more or have a significant tie to the flathead, such as work, our our local family, 94%. We serve our neighbors. Tanya Horn is my guest, and uh, we're going to see if we can uh, 
put a couple of uh, possibilities for solutions out I'm there. Kip Tkachik, Program Director and Forensic Interviewer for the Flathead County Children's Advocacy Center, a program of the Flathead County Sheriff's Office. The Flathead County Children's Advocacy Center provides services to child victims of crime involving physical and sexual abuse. FCCAC also directs and coordinates our multidisciplinary team comprised of nine agencies, each having responsibilities for the well-being and protection of our community's kids. Our team also enhances the system responses designed to protect our children by providing victim advocacy, therapeutic referrals, forensic medical exams, forensic interviews, and case review to improve case outcomes. With your help and financial support, we can provide services for more of our community's children, offer better training for our professionals who work with them, and improve our outcomes in and out of the courtroom. You can contact me directly by emailing fccac at flathead.mt.gov or by calling 758 5593. That's 758-5593. It's coming June 22nd, and you won't want to miss it. Climb Big Mountain 2024. Lace up your hiking boots and conquer the Danny on Trail to Summit House. Enjoy breathtaking views, delicious food, live music, and even face painting for the kids. Plus this year's swag bags packed with surprises, including gift cards worth up to $50. It's the perfect opportunity to explore the beauty of our own backyard, support a good cause, and make unforgettable memories with friends and family. Don't let this adventure pass you by. Mark your calendar June 22nd. Register today. Climb Big Mountain 2024. See you at the summit. Let's climb together, celebrating Flathead Industries' 32nd year. For information and registration, visit flatheadindustries.org. And now, back to Warming Center Wednesdays with the Flathead Warming Center and KGEZ's John Hendricks. My guest is Warming Center's Executive Director, Tanya Horn. So, Tanya, uh, what can we do? What can we at least do right now to see if we can take some of the pressure off? Well, some solutions that we proposed was to have regular communication between the warming center and law enforcement. We need to determine if it is indeed um, warming center guests who are causing the issues. And when we are armed with the information that yes, it is, and yes, it is a crime, or yes, it's caused a disturbance in the neighborhood, then and only then can the warming center do doing something about that. So it's important to, to have that in place formalized. We've already done that. We've already worked with our law enforcement, but to have a formalized opportunity to have that communication. Our guests know that we don't harbor them. We're not hiding them from law enforcement or from any kind of accountability. Let's go ahead and formalize that. Let's make a weekly meeting so that we can exchange information so that the bad actors, whether they're warming center guests or not, can be better held accountable. What can we do to take these folks from where they are to where they can be so they can rejoin their lives again? Well, I think that starts with community and I think that starts with all of us. I think we all have to get on the same page. We have to quit grouping everyone together. We have to quit thinking that everyone who's homeless are criminals or everyone who's homeless are this or that or everyone who's homeless is not from here. We have to first get together and understand that these are our neighbors and we need to work together. Then we need to invite them to the table to be a part of the solution. I believe, and we've talked a lot, John, you and I have talked a lot about Homeless Advisory Council. I believe that that's something that is worth a try for our community's sake to yeah. pull that together. Um, but bringing the homeless to the table allows them to have a voice in the solution. And when they have a voice in the solution, it's not what we're doing to the homeless if we make an ordinance or a law or close a bathroom or something like that. It's what we're doing with the homeless when they have a voice. And that is the only way we're going to get to solution. So if we just leave this um, with uh, where we at today, I guess the question is, if we ignore the homeless people, will they just go away? Absolutely not. These are our neighbors. 
94% from the Flathead or have a significant tie. They have a reason to be here. These are our neighbors. This is their home. We use the word homeless, but really they're not homeless. The Flathead is their home and they're not just gonna get up and, and leave. We're looking forward to further uh, discussions with you and dialogue with others and see if we can, uh, let's, get, let's get some solutions going. You know, Kalispell and Flathead is an amazing community with a lot of smart people, with a lot of smart compassion. We can come together and we can find solutions that are transformational for our community. Tanya Horn, thanks so much. Thank you for joining us for another Warming Center Wednesday. Did you miss it or would you like to share it with friends? Find today's and past shows via flatheadwarmingcenter.org. It's Warming Center Wednesdays on KGEZ 96.5 FM and 600 AM.